hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi. Hey, awesome. Can hey, you hear Jason? us? Sure, the whole thing works. Yes, I can. Yeah, everything yeah, works yeah, fine. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> it's plenty of time for it to break. Today with Not yet. High, hey, everybody. It's the voice of Melissa. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, anyway, that's Dr. Dave, and we are here live, as usual, Sunday afternoon. Uh, but uh, starting next week, I don't think you're going to be here at 3, are you? It will be at 4 at o'clock. At 4. Okay. Starting next week, we just go to back to one hour, and that's with WFLA right here on Facebook Live and Periscope and whatever these other scopes happen to be. And so we'll go at 4 o'clock. So 4 till 5. YouTube, mm-hmm. WeTube, YouTube. Yeah, you know. all that stuff. Yeah, anything but TikTok. Yeah, well, I don't dance, you know? well, you know, you can stay away from all that anyway. So tonight, <laughs> uh, today, this afternoon on the show, you're going to talk about th- the roids, as, as the wife put it, roids, the roid rage. The roids. We're going to talk about the roids. We're going to talk about thyroid <laughs> in particular. Mm. You know, you know that's the only roid I'm really interested in right now. Unless you unless you really have a problem with hemorrhoids. Um <laughs> You know, so we can we can we can sit on that topic for as long as you choose. Uh, my God, uh, that's a joke. Ar, 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 ar. That is a joke. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, directly <laughs> following this show, and no worries, we've actually tested the lines, so we're gonna move. Yeah. We're gonna move from WDBO. It'll be our final broadcast there. Yes, and then we'll move over to WFLA. A seamless transition. It you should would be. Think. Yeah, somewhere between the news. Yeah, yeah. You would think it would be seamless, except that they they clicked us out last week, so we. Really we had a dry run. Yeah. I mean, a dry run. Yeah, that was an issue. Dead of, air. A definite issue. Um, but that's okay. It was fun. They they owe you one. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to figure out what the heck is going on here. You know. Are you? What'd you say? What he did? Did you just say something in our ear, Jason? No, I don't think so. like someone else was talking. What's well, Dave Wall? Dave, oh. now Dave is a good dude. He, Dave's a good dude. Does he have Dave, an alter personality or something? An alter something going on? He may have an alter ego. Oh. No. But Dave is a he's like he's he's like a surf a surfer dude. This guy comes in, he is tanned, ready to go, dude. buff. Okay, and he's probably seventy years old. You wouldn't think so. Dude, really? Yeah. Great voice. I have no idea. But he chunks it. This guy just just comes in, does his job, and then he's gone. Pros at Serta Pro. Wait, what's going on? I guess this technically means it's the last day I can text Doc about my medical ailments. Oh, you can text me. Jason can text me anytime you want to. I told to. you Trust someone was talking in my ear. Anytime you want, Chase. It's not a problem. And the outside of my you got my private number, which is my only number, actually. You can barely hear him? It's really easy to get a... Yeah. The outside of the inside of your home or business, folks. At Serta Pro Painters, they provide... And one, two, three, four. There you go. Now I can hear you. All right. I can hear saying? clearly. Yes. No. Anytime you need me, Chase, I'm here. Okay. Appreciate it. Happy that to do it, bro. Painting project done. Schedule your free remote estimate the, today. The best part about that is they, they definitely got Serta that on tape. Serta Pro Painting, <laughs> the and trusted experts in painting. License number one eight one six six one four six six seven. I'm testing. Test. Everyone's good. How are we doing online? Oh, we already have some people up there. Hello. Hey, Tommy. Hey, John. John is bored. Air conditioning and plumbing services. Does that mean broke a board? I never. It's a little bit of both. Is he still a silly savage? Hi, Linda. Hi, guys. Oh, we have somebody calling in from Spain. Now, is that near New Jersey? Yeah, probably. Wait, <laughs> it's my God, Virginia, something like that. Anyway, my friends. Um, so we're just getting ready. I know you can hear a couple of dueling. Here we go. Oh, it's traffic. Oh, we don't want to hear her. Nobody cares about traffic. What? In on a Sunday? Yeah. I mean, where are you going? You know, our traffic reports, just a little insight for you people here. This is Melissa again. Uh, we have they'll, they'll tell us about the attractions, and they tell us about the testing sites for Corona. I'm like, you're the traffic lady. <laughs> you is there an accident? It. Yeah. Shut up. Well, I, I want to be the weather guy here. I want to be oh like God, Dave the Wall. weather guys. Hold okay, on. weather here in Orlando, it is hotter than stink. I did okay. weather. I mean, it's 20 degrees difference between day and night. That's that's the diff- That's all you do. And, 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 and there's a 50 50 chance it's going to rain. Yeah. yeah. Could be dark. Yeah. <laughs> chances, chances of dark chances tonight. Chances of being dark are very good. Yeah. Check. Check. This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News Chief. <laughs> this is where Alon turns first for breaking news, weather and traffic, WDBO. Hey, it's Joe Kelly. Join me for Orlando's morning news every weekday morning starting at 5. Just ask Alexa to set an alarm and wake up to WDBO. And, and when wake up to Alexa. Hello, hello. Work on time well, I, I wonder who dates Alexa. Here we go. 
Nobody. I for ultimate project. Are you fib? You fib. I can't wait, guys. WDBO. This show is not a medical opinion and does not consent to doctor-patient relationship. Three o'clock on a Sunday. You know what it's time for. Stages of life on WDBO 107.3 FM and AM 580. Chris Crawford here with you. And our phone number, if you want to join the show and get your medical question answered, is 844-580-WDBO. That's the number, 844-580-WDBO, 844-580-9326. Just go ahead and give us a call with whatever medical issue that you're experiencing or question that you might be having. Uh, you don't have to use your real name either, so you can call in anon anonymously if you'd like. And you can also hit us up on the open mic feature in the WDBO app. Just open up the app. It's free. Click the open mic feature there in the bottom. You'll leave a little voicemail type of thing. We'll play that live on air and get that question answered as well. But the easiest way to get in touch, 844-580-WDBO. And here's the man who'll be answering all those questions for you, Dr. David Klein. Doc, what's going on? Well, I am having a great day today. You know, I think I'm through my fourth costume change, you know, with all this, <laughs> uh, this, this heat. It's really been pretty miserable out here. You know, so you go outside and you wonder... Oh, just how marvelous it is to live in this paradise. And then you realize that you can't breathe because the air is so thick. <laughs> After okay. 25 seconds of being outside, oh, you realize why seconds. it's much more, you way are, more marvelous to live inside your air conditioned. <laughs> you are done when it's working. So in any yes, event, so yes. what we're going to do, I was, gonna, I was thinking, well, you know, on a day like this, you know, where it's 105 degrees with the, with the heat index. And, you know, I'm going to talk about something like hot flashes. Why? Because why not make things worse? But then I, tried, I thought about it. I said, no, no, no. I'm going to talk about something that, that has a, a somewhat different spin on temperature control. And we're going to do it on thyroid. Now, why do I care so much about thyroid? Why should you care about thyroid? And the fact of the matter is, is that it's an extraordinarily common, very, very, very common sort of ailment within our population. And the older you get, the more likely you are to becoming uh, to, uh, to become thyroid, uh, let's say, dysfunctional, hypothyroid typically. There are some people that will become hyperthyroid. It may be 1% of thyroid patients. But the vast majority of folks, as they get older, will in fact develop one of several types of thyroid disease. One in three, maybe, maybe even more, depending upon how uh, you set your threshold for diagnosis. And so how do you know? And why should you care? whether you have thyroid disease? And the answer is very simple. 60% of our population is overweight, okay? And thyroid is integral. Thyroid function is essential to be balanced in order for you to maintain a normal weight. When it's not, thyroid function starts to tip off. Let's say it starts to become hypothyroid. Let's say it's subclinical, which means your doctor can't figure it out, but it's there nevertheless. And you start gaining weight. So you gain three or four or five pounds a year. Well, after eight or nine years, you are now obese. It doesn't take very long for you to go from a skinny thing with a bikini to, to a porker. It does not take long at all. And you, know, you turn around and there it is. Or let's say that, that you're doing okay and you have a child. This is the key one right here. And then boom, you can't get the weight off. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's a mistake? Do you think that, that nature is just playing a trick on you? And these are different presentations of thyroid disease, hypothyroidism. So people go, well, my doctor checks me once a year for thyroid. Checking somebody once a year for thyroid disease is something akin to playing whack-a-mole with one shot. Okay, so up comes the mole, boom. Okay, then you walk away and you think you won. Okay, that, that mole pops up intermittently. Okay, so you can become hypothyroid very, very quickly. And in fact, sometimes the diagnosis takes repetitive drug uh, blood draws in order for you to detect it. So what is the thyroid? And the thyroid is an odd gland. It's shaped like a butterfly. Not, an, a, not it's not a coincidence. That's actually the logo of my business, which is a is a butterfly. So what is this thing? It sits in the front of the neck, on top of the um, the thyroid, and in the middle of it are four additional glands called parathyroids. Okay, and people don't think too much about the parathyroids, but they should. So when the thyroid starts to go wonky, when it starts to go sideways, most frequently it starts to enlarge. It's called a goiter. And it used to be, sometimes you'd bring people in and, and their neck would be enormous. If you go to the National Gallery of Art or the National Portrait Gallery, or if you go to some of the, the galleries in Europe in particular and look at, at art from the Renaissance, you see lots and lots of women with fat necks. Okay, these are goiters. 
goiter was considered to be a sign of beauty at that time. Okay, so there it was. Now, so was the, the fact that they were a little bit heavy. Okay, so you see a goiter, okay, and you know you have a problem. Now, what was it that caused goiter during that period of time? And it was iodine deficiency. But you don't see that so much now. And yet, we have people running around looking for iodine tablets or iodine this and iodine that to treat a problem that hasn't been a problem in 200 years. Okay, ever since we started iodinizing salt, you really no longer needed iodine tablets. If you're taking thyroid preparations, something like <clears throat> Armour Thyroid, Nature Thyroid, Synthroid, you're getting every bit of the, the iodine that you need already in the tablet. And yet people are out there running around getting iodine because they're treating something back from the Middle Ages. So this is a little bit crazy, but it's what people do. So what is it? What does the thyroid do now that you know where it is? What it does is it regulates basal uh, metabolic rate, sometimes known as temperature. So you'll have people out there. And so we're going to have a lot of people that are listening in right now, lots and lots of folks. And a significant num number of these people are going to say, well, you know, I run a low temperature all the time. Okay, well, we're not supposed to run a low anything, any of the time. Your temperature as a human being should vary, actually, as the day goes on. It hits a low of 97.6 Fahrenheit, for those of you that are in Europe, and we have several on, the, on Facebook that are from Europe. So 97.6 Fahrenheit to as high as 99.6 by 10 p.m. So at 4 o'clock in the morning, 97 and change is normal, and 99 by 10 p.m. And so if in the middle of the day your temperature's 97, you're sick. you got a problem. And you're the same person that's going to tell the doc, well, gee, I know I have a fever, even though my temperature's only 98.8. That's a, that's a temperature for me. You, ma'am, have hypo hypothyroidism. So what is it that the thyroid does? Again, basal metabolic rate. It sets your temperature, and it varies as the day goes on. Now, sure enough, if you're an athlete, you can go out and warm up. That's what you do. You want your muscles to be nice and warm so they function better, and you don't tear into the tendons. But for the most part, we're not poikilotherms. We don't adjust our own temperatures by what's going on in the environment. It should remain within that narrow range, and the body does change it. You know, why do, why do you want it to be a little cooler at night? Why do you want it to be a little warmer during the day? It has to do with certain bits of housekeeping uh, that the body does with regards to metabolism. Metabolism, detoxification, sleep. Your, your brain works best. It sleeps best at a cooler temperature. So one of the things I tell people that come in, well, I have, I have problems getting to sleep. One of the first things you do is take your, your, your thermostat and lower it a degree or two. You open, you know, up north where I grew up, you'd open the window up. This is what you did, and you would sleep better. You turn the heat up, you sleep poorly. It's just the way the brain works. It's the way the body works. Lower, lower the, 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 the temperature you know, by lowering your thermostat, and you'll sleep better. But that doesn't mean that that works for you during the day. So the thyroid can go wonky, and it will. Now, what is it that, that controls the thyroid? It's actually the pituitary gland through a, a hormone, which is actually not a single hormone, but a family of hormones called thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH. To make it more interesting, you know, doctors will go out, that's the gold standard, you know, for determining whether or not you're hypothyroid. And that's a big joke. That's a lie, actually. Because not all TSHs actually are stimulatory. Can you imagine thyroid-stimulating hormone that's actually inhibitory? And, and this is the way these things work. There are thousands thousand different TSHs. It's a huge molecule, and there are lots of variability here. So what else can, can throw this thing off? So the pituitary influences it. The hypothalamus influences the pituitary. But here's the joke. Your ovaries influence your thyroid. And so now, guys out there, you don't have ovaries, typically, okay? You may think you do, and others might think you do, but you don't. And so estradiol, actually, or absence thereof, will cause the thyroid to go south. It makes uh, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, inadequate. It, drop, it makes it so it doesn't work. It doesn't uh, kick the thyroid up. So you can be functionally hypothyroid by not having enough estradiol. And wouldn't you know it, that happens to every woman beginning around the age of 40. 40 years of age, all of a sudden your estradiol starts to trash, okay? And your thyroid starts to f suffer as a result and you start to gain weight. So if you know anybody, that's a you know forty years of age and a little high, you know a little more, and they start gaining weight. Okay, this is a, this is what happens. Okay, so you start to look like you're getting that that COVID fifteen, 
In my case, it's COVID-22, okay? Mm -hmm. 22 pounds on because of this COVID business. And it's not because I'm out there not exercising. It's because I'm eating too darn much. I'm still working, but I'm eating too much. I think that this is just an excuse that people have. I got fat because I meant to. So, so what does the thyroid do? Okay, it regulates metabolism. If you're hypothyroid and you're a woman, okay, and this happens a lot, it'll cause heavy irregular menstruations. So at your age of 40, 45 years of age, you become hypothyroid, and now all of a sudden your menstruation starts to kick up. It becomes heavy irregular every two weeks instead of every four, heavier than usual. And what's the first thing they want to do? They want to do a DNC followed by a hysterectomy. Makes no sense. Okay, why? Because that bit of plumbing, that bit of anatomy is there for a reason. And sometimes you can fix this thing for, let's say, 15 cents a day rather than having to be gutted unnecessarily. So the thyroid is something we're going to discuss here very, very shortly. What is the thyroid? We talked about a little bit of that. What does it do? We talked a little bit about that. And then we're going to talk about how do you diagnose thyroid issues, followed by how do you treat it? And if we have time, which I expect we will, we're going to talk about nutritional things you can do to support the thyroid. And it's not taking iodine. Okay, which is an insanity. That's nuts. Okay, why do you not want to take iodine if you don't need it? Because the body doesn't need something that it doesn't need. So what we're going to do, let's start with, you know, the thyroid. How do you diagnose hypothyroidism? Well, first thing you do. Well, well, Doc, let's actually hold it right there. We'll get into the deeper details here momentarily. We got to hit the, let's hit the three big things. Do we here. have to? A good, oh, my God. Well, I think, I think we left it at a good point there. I think, you know, <laughs> you, 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 the three things you need to know, I'll tell you what. One is don't go outside today if you don't have to. The second thing is avoid, <laughs> Port, uh, avoid Portland, okay, because it really isn't a cool city anymore. And the third thing, I don't know. It's up to you. The third thing is don't fall asleep awkwardly on too many pillows because you'll wake up the next day with a very stiff neck and it will be uncomfortable all Ooh. day long. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's your third one. Yeah, that's that. Eight, four, there eight, you four, go. Four, five, eight, zero, WDBO. Go ahead. Give us a call if you've got a medical question. If you woke up with a stiff neck and want to know how to help it out. Sounds like it's probably four. <laughs> <laughs> now that sounds personal. Happens to me, me sometimes if, if, I, if, I, if I, let's say if I'm up too late watching old movies and drinking too much. Right, right. Okay, um, I'm going to give you guys a, a link to share here in a second if you're on the feed. <clears throat> Got a good amount of people watching. Cool. Um, it's Melissa behind the scenes right now because I can't get my camera to work properly. But <laughs> 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 you know what? That's, well, but that's not important. <laughs> sometimes it's peace. It's good to be suspicious. Yeah, oh, I like yeah. it. Well, that was why I got into radio, but enough about me. Um, if you have any medical questions or things going on or you want to know about the rapid COVID testing that yeah. Doc has available, uh, I'm going to run the number across the bottom of the screen here, but cool. it is 407-636-3945. COVID testing hotline. Yeah. And could you explain kind of what that is? Because we had, uh, I could not get Bud this week to grasp the concept that this is available here and not just in South Florida or in the Panhandle. Well, some, there, there's some things that are just beyond grasp. Uh, well, here's the deal. Okay, the <laughs> rapid test, as it's most commonly known, is called an antigen test. And it's pretty useless. Okay, actually. Okay, it'll, yeah, you can do it in 15 minutes, but it's only 90% of, uh, efficient. Okay, what does that mean? It means that you're going to get a lot of false positives and a good number of false negatives. So if you have a group of 10 people, okay, so you're all going back to work and you all get tested, one of you is going to be wrong. Okay, that's a lot of people. The PCR is the one you want, which is which is 97.5% to 99% sensitive. Very, very cool technology. The problem is, is that in lots of areas, it takes 5 to 15 days to get the result back. Well, at Florida Laboratory Analysis, which is the sister company to Stages of Life, mm -hmm. we're able to get this done in 24 to 36 hours. We promise people 48. Okay, so 48 hours is what uh, we promise. But if we get the sample, okay, in Longwood, which is north of Orlando, before noon, preferably, be, uh, preferably before 11 a.m., we can have it couriered to the laboratory in Jacksonville, and it'll be run that night, which means it's resulted at 3 o'clock in the morning that uh, evening. So that's like 12 hours. Why we promise 24 to 36? Because if it pops positive, we recheck it, which means it has to go on the next run. Nice. This very is important. very, very important. Okay, we are not going to tell anybody, gee, uh, you got a problem if you don't. So we check it twice. That's just the way we do things. Nobody else I know of uh, actually does that. So again, it's 407-636-3945. That's the COVID hotline. 
And we have offices in Jacksonville, St. Augustine, as well as Longwood. <laughs> Keith is trying to help with the, the light. <laughs> oh, is that right? The lighting, yeah. I know I'm having a, a hell of a time with it today. I just cut that. I cut the one light. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Your glass Helps are casting shadows that make you look like you have crazy eyebrows. <laughs> there you go. They kind of are for a second, but I'm all right with it. Um, maybe he does. Uh, Kathy has a question. She sure, said uh, about flu shots. What do you want? I heard we should get it earlier this year. When would you suggest? Also, I'll be 6 to 5 at the end of September. Should I get the old folks dose or a regular shot? Is get, there? get the old folks one. That's the quadrivalent. If you go to Publix, if you live here in Central Florida, if you live in the South, Kathy, I don't know where you live. Not from, not from the, the information I have. But Publix is giving away a $10 gift card, which means you can go get groceries or whatever you want. And they give you the shot at the same time. It's actually kind of cool. So I'll be going in tomorrow to get mine. So what do you want to do? You're, you're going to want to get it. If you're 64 and change, get the quadrivalent. It's really what you want. If you want to wait until September to do it so Medicare covers it, fine. But you only have to worry about uh, this until the 1st of September. So you're going to be Medicare um, capable. If you, if you get online right now and get things started, the 1st of September. So it's the first day of the month that you turn 65. That's only a couple weeks away. So if it means you're not going to pay for something, then you may want to wait a couple weeks. I'm getting mine tomorrow. Tess is going to get hers tomorrow. How are we doing, guys? Okay, can someone let me in so I know what uh, phone calls you guys got lined up, crazy guys? Just kidding. You. There we go. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to discuss the, the, you know, the, the uh, co- uh, quadrivalent on air, too. Good, 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 good. So, uh, so Kathy, thank you for that. That's a good question. <clears throat> it's a perfect um, question, actually. Thank you. 45 seconds. Sabrina, when we take the next break, we will uh, answer your question. Okay? But are we, are we, are we, if we have time. Now we don't have 45 seconds. That means we have 30 seconds. So basically, <laughs> call the hotline 407-636-3945 if you want to line up a COVID uh, rapid test. Here we go. Well, we got to listen to this first, though. So. We got you covered. <laughs> Is somebody going to let me in on the uh, phone part so I can see what we've got? I'm waiting for Keith or somebody to respond. We can wing it. I don't, I don't, I don't even know that Keith actually has anything to do with it. Okay. This is where Orlando turns first. Wait, I gotta make sure he doesn't play any music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, YouTube's gonna be Welcome bad. back to Stages of Life on WBBO 1073 FM and AM 580 Orlando's News and Talk. You can go ahead and call us right now. Those phone lines are open 844 580 WDBO 844. 844- 5809326 or you can hit us up on that open mic feature in the WDBO app the app is free the feature is free and the advice that doc is giving out is free as well but the phone lines that's the easiest 844580 WDBO and actually doc before we do get back to the thyroid uh, conversation I am curious do you have any recommendations for a stick, stiff neck cuz this thing is just debilitating today yeah there are a couple things you want to do okay the first thing and the most easily uh, rem- the easiest remedy of all for a stiff neck from sleeping funny that's assuming that's actually how you did it and I know you <laughs> all right um, yeah it's just actually soak in some hot water and what you do is you get some Epsom salts and you take a third of a cup of Epsom salt, throw it in the tub of hot water and then submerge yourself. And that doesn't mean under, you know, get your head down underneath it, but get your neck in. That's the first thing. Second thing you can do is you can use over the counter. Um, there's, there's a, a Voltaren gel, 1% gel. It used to be prescription. Now it's over the counter and it's cheap. The stuff is very, very reasonable, especially at Costco. And what you do is you take a, a slather of it. One good sneeze worth, about a gram and a half. And you apply that stuff along the spinous processes. So those are the bumps along the back of your neck. And that should settle things down. Third thing, and this you want to do concurrently with one and two, and that's to get some Aleve. And you take three Aleve in the morning, two Aleve in the evening, and that'll get you the therapeutic dose of the naproxen, which is a marvelous anti-inflammatory. And if you hear barking in the background, that's actually a dog that just kind of shot his way into the, into the studio here. You know, it's kind of like a like a furry white furry rat. It's a it's a it's a it's a, 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 a it's a, it'd make a big rat, but a really small it dog. It just wants to participate in the show. As oh well. no, and doing a beautiful job at it. You know, it, yeah. you know how the you know how the you know, the wires are underneath a lot of these tables, and so it's going through running through like like a like a kid kid going through, <laughs> uh, you know, the the Halloween horror nights. <laughs> it's actually kind of amusing. So, but that's what I would be doing were I you. 
right, so appreciate the info. Happy to do it. Well, we can go to the phone lines here. We do have somebody on the line, 844-580-WDBO, 844-580-WDBO. Let's go to Carol. She's calling in from right here in Orlando. Carol, welcome Excellent. to the show. What's your question for Doc? Hi there. I wondered if there was um, a remedy for lipoedema. I don't really mean lipo or lipoedema or lymphedema, okay. but lipoedema, which is where the fat cells will not go down no matter what is done. Okay. Are you familiar with that? Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. And the question is, where do you have these lesions? Well, it's mostly the hips. And the legs, the um, the thighs. Okay, so are they, is it large areas that, that have oh, the extra obesity to it, or is it uh, like lumps? No, no. It seems like a pretty good area. And I had a booklet that told something about it, and I noticed there was like a progression, although the, the worst uh, progression, I think, I would never get to that. Um, but uh, it has changed through the years. I'm in my 80s now. And it has gotten uh, to be heavier, the heavier hips and, and uh, thighs. And I've been told that no matter uh, if I lose five pounds, nothing's leaving from that area. Okay, well, there's some things that you can do, you know, if you find that you need to. And I'm not necessarily going to encourage you to do this. But there's, there's some people that will end up with a situation like that. And you can go ahead and you can get, um, there's cosmetic surgery that you can do for this. Okay, where you can actually go in there and suck the fat out. It's actually kind of, when, it, when you do it, when you watch it being done, it's kind of gross, actually. But from a surgical standpoint, it's actually kind of interesting. You know, why is this necessary? And the answer is because fat cells don't multiply after the age of six years old. So, but the cells themselves can get larger and larger and larger, or they can get smaller, smaller, smaller. But if you want to get rid of the tissue, this is pretty much one approach. Another one, okay, is, a, is a, a competing technology that's done without breaking the skin. And the one that we use in my office actually sucks the, um, the fat, the fat cells through the skin into a little uh, area. Okay, we, we used to call these things, oh gosh, what's the name of the technology? Um, it's firm, that's what it's called, it's a, by uh, in mode. And so what you do is you draw it into a little chamber. It's a handheld device. Again, the, there's a vacuum that pulls the skin into this area. It waits, heats it up, and then zaps it with a little shot of electricity and then electrocutes a third of the cells. I had this done on my back, my butt. <laughs> you know Why? Because I wanted to be attractive to younger women. And it worked. I got to tell you, I got, ended up getting I got married out of this one. But for the most part, okay, you leave it alone. Okay, you're 80 years old. It's not necessarily going to change that much, you know, but unless you're having a hard time bending your legs, bending your knees, bending your hips, just leave it be. It's part of you. So, you know, these are not lipomas. People are going to think, well, what's, you know, these lipomas, they're here and they're there. If they're lipomas, you can remove them. You know, if it's something like, um, oh, I'm trying to remember the, um, oh, there's a, a neurofibromatosis, von Recklinghausen's disease, is a type of lipid disorder. And so you'll see this around certain sensory nerves. So neurofibromatosis may be an issue, but I doubt it. I think what you've got going on here is the fact that, you know, you're, you know the fat in the lower extremities has just gotten to be a little bit too much. Leave it be. Okay, you're going to be okay with it. You're just going to look a little bit, you'll, you'll, you'll just not feel perfect about yourself in a bathing suit. So I hope that answers the question. Yes, I do know what this is about. This is just lipid tissue that's kind of gotten out of hand. Some people get it in their tummy. Some people get it in their, their tush. You got it in your legs. So there we are. All right. Appreciate you calling in there, Carol. Good stuff, Doc. 844-580-WDBO is our number. Doc, why don't you go ahead and give out your contact info really quick before we hit the break? Sure enough. Well, we can be reached at 407-679-3337. You can see and read all about us, okay, at stagesoflifemedicalinstitute.com. That's stagesoflifemedicalinstitute.com. We're located at the intersection of I-4 and 434 in, in Longwood. Um, but again, Stages of Life Vitamins.com. You can go find us on Stages of Life Radio, Facebook, and YouTube. We're all over the place. But again, 407 679 3337. Ask for Iris, and we're happy to chat with you. Or you can just come by and visit. And our number here, 844 580 You're okay? Yeah. All right. Um, and <clears throat> we're clear. Okay, so back to Facebook. We have um, Sabrina. Sabrina's question. Oh. Shoot, hold on. I'll get you. 
Uh, Sabrina has a question about toe fungus. Only one toe's affected, can't get rid of it. Been using Jubilee, Jubilee, uh, prescription, a- topical, dermatomist, not, uh, dermatologist, tom- dermatologist. Dermatologist. Damn it. Yeah, what I typically use is, is something called itraconazole. And so I'll go ahead and I'll use the tab- uh, tablets orally, okay, and then topically you can go ahead and use a terbenafine or one of these others. And so what you do is you want to uh, deal with it from the inside out as well as for the outside in. So Jubilee topical is great stuff, but it really doesn't get far enough into the skin to clear it. Now, if it's the if the fungus is in the great toe, the big toe, it takes a year to get rid of it. So three months may not be sufficient. Second, third, fourth toes, you know, three months should be plenty of time. Now, the funny thing is, is the fifth toe takes the longest of all. Uh, why is that? Because the blood flow to the small toe is, 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 is just miserably small. So what else can cause this? If you're hypothyroid, believe it or not, why would hypothyroidism lead to toenail fungus? And you would not think those two things are at all related. But it works something like this. When you're hypothyroid, the skin doesn't grow as fast as it would under normal circumstances. The hair doesn't grow as fast as it might under normal circumstances. And the nails being part of that same system grow very, very slowly. So when somebody comes in and they have toenail fungus or even uh, nail fungus in their hands and you see this periodically, you need to look at the thyroid because if you don't get the thyroid under more, um, let's say to bring it to normalcy, then very, very frequently it's a it's tough. It's, it's, it sucks. It's miserable to try to pitch this problem out. But that's probably what you're going to need to look at anyway. Now, the deal with Jubilee is it's expensive. You know, it's just one of those kinds of things. But you need to be taking something along the lines of itraconazole orally. Okay, let's see. Uh, what causes fluid-filled thyroid cysts? Didn't we just talk about that? Or no, was that? That, was, that was a lady that had fat in her legs. Oh. Okay, so thyroid cysts are kind of cool. Okay, and so... Mm-hmm. what? Okay, so when you have autoimmune thyroid disease, okay, which is kind of a neat thing, you're more likely to get thyroid cysts. Now, do thyroid glands develop cysts? The answer is yes, by their nature. But when you have autoimmune disorder, it becomes inflamed, and then these cysts can grow and grow and grow and grow. And they're actually not filled with water. They're filled with with, uh, thyroid hormone. They're called colloidal cysts. So what does this mean? It means you need to get a thyroid um, ultrasound they're bred every six months to a year we do them every six months in my office because what you're really looking for is to make sure that it doesn't develop into cancer does that happen the answer is yes does it happen often the answer is no I hope that answered the question I think it did actually uh, let's see we got a lot of people just hanging out listening cool. to learn here uh, Keith any more suggestions about the lighting angle I've been working on that as we speak well we need to get some theater lighting in here you think it's hot in here now <clears throat> yeah right some gels. I got one. <laughs> you got one gel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Um, actually, and that so, thing smokes like the good old days. Those were good. Yeah. yeah. Well, we learned what limelight was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we learned lots of stuff. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we are talking about thyroids, a common problem, uncommonly understood. Yes. Well, that's prophetic. It's pathetic, really. No, prophetic, no, yes. Pro, but, not But pathetic pub. is, cor- I think, is more correct. Pathologic? Yeah. <laughs> Pathologic. So, you know, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into what does it take to actually diagnose hypothyroidism? And, and it may be very, it may, it may in fact be very much simpler than you think. And so, you know, we talk about all kinds of expensive lab tests, which, by the way, aren't that expensive. Mm-hmm. So, oh, you know, I got I to gotta have insurance to get my blood checked. Are you kidding me? You know, no. You know, it, none of this stuff is that expensive. Jubilee is expensive. Okay. Yeah, that, that stuff, was- that's wickedly expensive stuff. You know, but making the diagnosis of thyroid disease and, in fact, treating it, is, it doesn't need to be expensive. So, like, for those thyroid ultrasounds, you think you think getting an ultrasound is going to be an expensive thing. I, I believe we charge $80 in my office to do thyroid ultrasounds. It's huh. nothing, okay? And, and it's not just a 2D echo. It's actually a Doppler echo because we're looking for softer signs of cancer. You're looking for the vascularity. Uh. So about 80 bucks is what we charge. You know, well, but the hospital, they charge 350 to 400 Well, if you want to go to the most expensive place in town, you might as well get good service out of it. You know, but you won't there. True. <laughs> right. You know, that's just the way it goes. So I'm going to end up being your lab experiment. I've, I've, uh, I've got the, the 25 extra going on already. <laughs> oh, you too, huh? Yeah. Oh, man. I'm not sure what's going on. So. <sighs> you know, the problem is all this, these new clothes I have to keep buying. 
Actually, what I did is I went up in, into the attic and pulled down the stuff from the last time I was fat. Yeah, I don't have that luxury. Yeah, well, I have an attic. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I meant. I, I don't have an attic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, good time. So, uh, so you, you, when we were talking in the last break about uh, how Bud was saying there wasn't any rapid testing here. Yeah. So, well, he, he, when we're going to clarify that in the next show, for sure, a couple of times, so people will be calling him up going, no, Dr. Klein said that, Bud. I don't think you've got that right. Uh. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you want the chance of, of telling Bud he's wrong, we're, we're going to give you some ample opportunity to do it. <laughs> you know, the fact is, is that you, it's hard to know everything that's going around, uh, around about town, in spite of what you might think about it. Right. You can't know, especially if you're hunkered down for six months. Patty, as soon as we take the next break, because we're just getting ready to come back here, we will uh, definitely discuss that the thyroid's effect on psoriasis. Psoriasis, cool. Yeah. But not yet, because we got to hear Joe talk about himself. Yeah, too. <laughs> I have, he reminds me of someone who had polio when they were a kid. Here we go. Thanks. Thanks. Work yeah, the on next. time with triple Great team thing. traffic and Pencil helping get around next. the changes from the I4 Ultimate was Project. Picked on a lot. Now, our Ask the Experts Weekend too. continues. Yay, welcome back. Now, you know, I can't play this music, guys. <laughs> I heard, did you hear the sigh of frustration? Yeah. <laughs> There's a blight on WDBO 107.3 FM and AM 580. Phone lines are open. We are live. 844-580-WDBO. 844-580-WDBO. 844-580-9326. The doc is in the house and he is answering your questions. So go ahead and give us a call right now. 844-580-9326. In the meantime, though, doc, where did you want to go next with the thyroid? So what I wanted to talk about is, is how do you diagnose hypothyroidism? Okay, because this is just the sort of thing that tends to drive people a little bit nuts because they'll go into the doctor's office and the docs mean well. Okay, it's a tough job under the best of circumstances. You know, being a family doc and seeing something somebody once every year, or once every five years, and trying to figure out what's going on in the 15 minutes that you're allowed to do this. It's a very hard thing to do. It's not like it is on TV, where you look at somebody and you see some lesion between their eyes and then know immediately that they've got some really rare, dis dis disgusting disorder. It doesn't work that way. Common things are common, and thyroid disease is extremely common. So what do they do? They'll do TSHs, because back 20 years ago, TSH was called the gold standard for making diagnosis of hypothyroidism. But in fact, it isn't, okay? Because there are many ways that you can make somebody hypothyroid or they can make themselves hypothyroid or nature can make them hypothyroid or their diet can make them hypothyroid without it necessarily involving thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. So the real trick to thyroid is to keep a high index of suspicion that there's a problem. And the single most important test that you do for somebody is something that's not done nearly frequently enough, and that's actually taking their temperature. And I don't mean waving something in front of them to tell them that, that they're not having a fever, they're afebrile. That is absolute, utter nonsense. You know, those things are a degree or two too cold in terms of really being realistic about temperatures. You know, I went ahead and did a little study on my own when they started coming out with this. Well, you can do this no-touch uh, temperature nonsense. So I bought two of these devices, assuming that one would be broken because they're both from China. And I went ahead and compared that to my, uh, my temperature probes. And there were two degrees too cold across the board. And when you're looking at thyroid disease, hypothyroidism makes you run a low temperature. So if you come in at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the morning in my office and your temperature is 97.6, that's fairly normal. Not real normal, just fairly normal. But if you come in at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and it's 97.6, you are sick. You're a degree and a half too cool. That is a hallmark of hypothyroidism. And that is the way that it is. Now, does it necessarily mean that you have a problem with the gland itself or the thyroid, it's, uh, the uh, pituitary itself? And the answer is no. You can make yourself hypothyroid by sucking down a soy smoothie. You know, this the stuff that they sell at these chain places, these smoothie places. Well, would you like a little extra soy in that? That's like asking somebody if they want an extra round or two in a revolver and playing Russian roulette. You have got to be kidding me. This stuff is, is poison. And if you don't believe it, okay, I used to do this with my patients because they didn't believe it either. Now people tend to believe me a little bit more. 
and that's to go get yourself a cup of hot coffee, black coffee, and then add non-dairy creamer to it. Non-dairy creamer, okay? Non-dairy creamer is almost always made out of soy, soy lecithin. Take your temperature before you take the hot coffee and then wait 30 minutes, take your, take your temperature and watch it drop. Understanding that you just took down a slug of heat and your temperature is supposed to go up as the day goes on, but it will drop. <clears throat> It'll drop like a rock. So it's kind of interesting. Soy will make you hypothyroid. So there are women out there that say, well, I have hot flashes, so I take this over-the-counter prep and it, it helps with the hot flashes. Look at what's in it. Soy lecithin. So what does it do? Yeah, it'll help you with the hot flashes because it's it's it'll help as a, as a, a um, it's a type of uh, estrogen. It's called a xenoestrogen. But really, the problem with these things is they're antithyroid. They hit a, an enzyme called three three five prime deionase, which converts T four to T three. Now, what does that mean? It means the the chemistry is there to explain how this stuff works. It will fight your thyroid function, and yet the TSH never changes. So how do you make the diagnosis? And the answer is very simple. First thing is with the temperature. If your temperature's cool, then you've got a really good expectation that you have one type of thyroid disease or another. Second thing, you look at the TSH because sometimes it's a gimme. It's a giveaway. If the TSH is over five, you know what you've got. You look at T3, T4, free T3, free T4. Those are the, the parameters that'll tell you whether or not your thyroid's actually producing. And then comes the fun stuff. You look for the antibodies, TPA and ATG. Now, we've got somebody that was on one of the other lines that's interested in talking about psoriasis. So can the thyroid affect psoriasis? And the answer is yes. Okay, autoimmune diseases like psoriasis can also demonstrate with autoimmune thyroid disease. So when folks come in with psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, they may come in with seborrheic arthritis, whatever, you always check their thyroid for thyroid antibodies because if they have Hashimoto's, one of the ways that you can help the psoriasis is by helping the thyroid disease. So folks with psoriasis almost always have low temperatures. You think it's a shock? It is not a shock. This is, this is very, very typical. So what is it about uh, Hashimoto's? Okay, Hashimoto's, if, if somebody comes in and they have thyroid antibodies and they have all the usual arthropathies and the dry mouth, this, that, or the other, they have Hashimoto's. Let's say somebody comes in, they have dry eye because they went to the ophthalmologist first or they went to the family doc complaining their eyes being dry. Well, now they, they have, have Sjogren's syndrome with, Hash, with Hashimoto's. Let's say they come in with rheumatoid arthritis and then somebody checks their thyroid and wouldn't you know it, they have, they have TP and ATG issues. Oh, well, guess what? They have rheumatoid with Hashimoto's. The fact is that all of these diseases are pretty much the same thing. It's who touches base first. It's who figures out, who finds that patient first. Whoever gets to establish the first relationship is the one that makes the diagnosis, but the treatment is always the same. So what do you do about thyroid disease? The first thing you need to do is to figure out whether or not you have it. Second thing is why. Now, let's say that you just delivered a, a kid. You end up with something called hypothyroidism of pregnancy. This is a really cool problem. Okay, so, you know, it's just what happens with women. They tend to lower their metabolic rate to protect the fetus. Fetus has to grow in spite of the fact that, um, you know, they're, they're getting larger too. Why is this? Because the nine-month gestational period, that's how long you're supposed to be pregnant. In history, okay, in, in, in millennia past, much of that time, about half of it was time of famine. So what the body did was it lowered the metabolic needs of the mom to protect and to feed the kid. Well, now that we're in times of plenty, what does this mean? It means pregnant gals get fat. Now, what happens after they deliver their children? Very frequently, it doesn't change. It's a switch that gets thrown and doesn't come back. And so that is an interesting problem. And I believe that a good bit of the folks that come in with post, um, postpartum depression may in fact have hypothyroidism that didn't switch back. So in any event, so how do you make the diagnosis? It's through blood work and through the clever use of, of a temperature probe, sometimes known as a thermometer. Now, what do you do? How do you treat it? And the answer is this, this gets into a, a peeing match with other docs. I was trained. Well, the only way to really treat hypothyroidism is to give somebody Synthroid, okay? And this tends to make some people better, but most people start to get sick with it. Now, why is that? Okay, because T4 is what Synthroid is, and that's what they, that's all it is. 
but the body has to convert T4 to T3, which is the active hormone. <clears throat> so T4, which is what you're taking, is a pro-hormone. In fact, it's an antagonist to T3. So if your body doesn't convert it, you got a problem. And wouldn't you know it, one person in six, that's 16% of the population, has a hard time making that conversion. So immediately, a bunch of people are not going to make it, not going to do well with it. The second thing, which is kind of cool, is that there are diseases and disease states that when it does convert it from T4 to T3, it causes the body to make reverse T3, which is also a competitive antagonist. So when you treat thyroid disease, if you give people straight T4, whether it's the generic Levoxyl or whether it's Synthroid or, or Tyrosin to one of the others, you really have to go ahead and understand that that is probably going to be inadequate and expensive. So what do I do? I typically use a combination product that has T3 and T4 in it. The one I like is called Nature Throid. I think it's a marvelous product. It's been around since, I think, 1908. Okay, it hasn't, or nine, is it 1908 or 1912, I can't remember exactly. And so it's, but it's been around a long time. You take once a day, sometimes twice a day, and it straightens things out. Armor thyroid is more expensive, but it's equally good. You can take WP thyroid, which is more expensive. And then you can go ahead and take your side, uh, your uh, Synthroid, but you have to add Cytomel to it. It's just much more expensive, and I'm a cheap kind of guy, and I really like to keep the prices down. So my preference is to go for the much less expensive medical approach. So what do you have to do to treat thyroid on top of that? This is, this is, get, this is where it gets to be cool, okay? So well, let's hold it right there, Doc. Let's, let's leave another cliffhanger here for the listeners. We'll come back to that. We've also got Lorraine in Mount Dor, who we're going to go to as well. Ooh, Lorraine. 844-580-WDBO, 844-580-9326. You are having a little bit of interruptions. Uh, Patty's got a couple of questions for us, actually. Um, Keith is uh, still instructing us with our lighting, which is good. <laughs> Try hydroxychloroquine and chase it down with bleach. No, Jonathan, no bleach. Our <laughs> guy. Um, the question, <laughs> there we go. No. Uh, can the thyroid affect psoriasis? Cyber- cy- so psoriasis? she got her answer. Yeah. yeah, okay. She got that one, and she wanted to know if you took uh, insurance. <laughs> Stop. Well, we got to let's see. Wait, the puppy's answering the question for me. Do I take insurance? Yes. We take Medicare and TRICARE Cigna, those three. And so but the deal with Cigna is that they're like 600 Cigna policies. So you actually have to check with them. So Medicare, TRICARE, and uh, most Cigna policies. So, But we don't do Blue Cross, although we'll help you submit it. But, you know, in, in, in all fairness, the most expensive care you're ever going to get is the, is the cheap stuff. And you know, some of these insurance companies go so cheap that the people that you're going to get doing it aren't really necessarily going to be the best docs for you. Is there Aetna anymore, or is that gone? Aetna, not so. We don't do Aetna anymore. I used to be an Aetna doc. I used to have an Aetna contract, United Healthcare contract, and Blue Cross contract. And what they are trying to do is steer doctors, steer the patients to their doctors. Oh, the GMO crap for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I got and I'm really, Medicare, TRICARE, Cigna most. No BCBS, no Florida Blue, no Aetna. Is that it? Nope, and we just we take lots and lots of people with no insurance at all. In fact, we about a third of our patients have those other insurances, and they just come and write a check. You know, it's just the way it goes. So, you know, you can get your lab work done elsewhere. That's not a big problem. But, you know, when it comes to the medical care. Yeah, I know it's freezing. I don't know exactly why it's freezing on Facebook Live unless all of my neighbors are watching porn. (laughs) (laughs) It it has happened. Usually they're later at night, but Sunday afternoon, maybe the kids are out. (laughs) At least it's not bleeding through into our feed. Boy, did I get the look. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not supposed to do that, Melissa. (laughs) How do we rein her in? (laughs) I'm just kidding. Uh, or am I? Hmm. But there, no, there's nothing wrong with the signal. I've been checking the speed test here. It seems to be that it's spectrum. We got like, a, if you want to download anything really fast, I got 499 download speed <laughs> megabits right? per second. Yeah, but the upload speed little sketchy right now. Well, they're the fastest growing uh, cellular network in the in the country. Yeah. That'll tell you something. So yeah. the, where are you going there? Yep. No, it seems the upload speed's getting better now, but at one point it was like 
almost one or two instead of 20. Well, in my office, okay, because we were having problems we as well. Fiber. We went fiber. I, I paid 30,000 bucks and had them pull fiber, you know, the, the cable, fiber cable from I-4 all the way across to my office because we needed a gig up, gig down. We didn't have time yeah, to wait. There's not, yeah, there's, this is ridiculous. It, it was pretty cool. A lot of different. Are you guys back at all? Or are you complaining still, ladies? Oh, people always complain. Guys, I know there's always going to be something to complain about. But hydroxychloroquine is cool stuff. In it spite is. of the fact that, that President Trump endorses it. Okay, which, oh, by yeah. the way, is, is, I mean, the guy's entitled to his opinion every bit as much as I'm entitled to mine. Yeah, but he says, go, you stop, you know. And What's then nonsense? He says hi, you say bye. Yeah. That's how that's it. Like, it's wrong. It's yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just you know, it's, it's wrong. Hydroxy, hydroxychloroquine, that gal with the uh, psoriasis more than likely is taking something similar to hydroxychloroquine for her psoriasis. Mm -hmm. It's an anti-inflammatory. Okay, why people are so weird about this? You know, three, four hundred million people are taking this drug on a daily basis for malaria or malaria prophylaxis. Wow. You know, are they all wrong? They're not all Trump supporters because no, most, most, most of them are in Africa. And they can't all be wrong. <laughs> they can't all be wrong. Of which, what is the, of which of the 52 countries are Africa? Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There we go. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, still, a bit, they're like, I don't know anymore. I can't tell if you're frozen or not, because Doc is sitting there with a frozen face. <laughs> oh, well, actually, that's that's my Parkinson's. No, I don't have Parkinson's. You're not. Don't joke about that kind of stuff. I know. Well, she says I have a frozen face. You did. Uh, did I? Yeah. Well, I, was, I was enjoying myself. You were in frozen face mode. No one could tell. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just watching it right now. By the way. You know, that's actually a pretty good gag. Yeah. You know, when I was at, when I was in, um, you know, I was in practice. Okay, in, in the middle of the night, you go into the intensive care unit. It's just not a lot of fun. It's lonely kind of work. You know, your wife is at home, your kids at home, all this kind of stuff. And there you are at three o'clock in the morning in the intensive care unit, and it's quiet, and it's dark, and it's dreary. So what I would do is I'd go ahead and see the patient I had to see, and I would take the EKG lead and tap it. Thank tap, you. Thirty seconds. Tap. 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 <laughs> tap. 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 And then put them in it would look like V fib. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the alarms would start going off, and then I'd stop, okay. <laughs> you know. And so it was kind of like good for a few laughs while you you woke up the nurses. Kind of a day. Yeah. Then they got they'd get you back. I stand by. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. This is, no, tap, this tap, is tap. me uh, bringing up the other st <laughs> the other radio station. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Blah, blah, blah. Well, we have to make it seamless, do we not? We go from, we go from this show to another one very quickly. Welcome back to Stages of Life on WDBO 107.3 FM and AM 580. If you want to call in, you can probably squeeze in one more call, 844-580-WDBO, 844-580-9326. In the meantime, we go to Mount Dora and talk with Lorraine. Lorraine, welcome to the show. What's your question for Dr. Klein? My question is that I've had both of my knees replaced, full replacement, <clears throat> and I did not have a problem until I had open heart surgery and I, my balance got messed up, and, and unfortunately, I fell twice on my left knee. All right. And it's been killing me ever since. All right. Has anybody x-rayed it? They or, tell me it's a soft tissue. All right. When you fell I'm on sorry? the When you fell on your knee, where did you strike? What part of the knee did you strike on? Land uh, on it. Right down on the, probably on the kneecap. Okay, cool. All right. And so, and, it's, and it, just, it, it just aches all the time? Does it ache when you move it in certain ways? It aches, and then it, the, the ache goes all the way up to my hip. Think, okay, to prevent or treat thyroid disease. So the amount of selenium that you take is 120 to 200 micrograms. The amount of zinc is 35 to 50 milligrams per day. We have a product called uh, Magic Minerals that has what you need in it. You take four of these capsules a day, it covers it. And so I put everybody that I've got on thyroid disease on this stuff. So I wanted to wrap it with stages of life medical institute.com. You can go on there and read about uh, what we have to, to offer. We're at the intersection of I four and 434, which is just north of Orlando. We can be reached at again, stages of life medical institute.com stages of life vitamins.com stage of life radio, Facebook, YouTube, we are all over the place, and I'd like to put a plug in, if I could, for the sister company, 
which is Florida about- Laboratory Analysis. And what we do there is COVID testing and we do it accurately, we do it inexpensively, and we do it fast. And we can be reached at 407-636-3945, 407-636-3945. We do employer testing, group testing, we do entire schools and we'll get the results out quickly so you can get back to life. Nobody wants to be waiting around forever. And that is at 407-255-4371. And again, this is Dr. David Klein with Stages of Life. You got about a minute left, Doc. Is there anything else you wanted to get in there if you're going in a little more detail about the COVID testing? Yeah, actually. Okay, so here's the deal, okay? The COVID testing need not take forever. There are people out there that go in and they need to travel, so they need a PCR. It has to be within 36 hours of traveling internationally. Go do that if you have to wait five days to get a result. So we're getting lots and lots of people that are coming into the Longwood office in particular, and they want to get their COVID testing and get their results out quickly. And so we can do that at 407-679-3337. That's 407-679-3337. Give us a call. Ask us. We'll be happy to, if we can't do it ourselves, we'll tell you how to get it done. We have the answers. You have the questions? We got the answers. All right. Good stuff there, Doc. Appreciate that. Again, you've listened to Stages of Life here on WDBO 107.3 FM and AM 580, part of our Ask the Ex- Experts Week. You should ask the experts. <laughs> Hi, guys. So- I am so happy to move over to iHeart. We're gone. Okay, let's. Uh... Now I can put my iHeart shirt on. <laughs> you have your iHeart shirt? I don't have an iHeart shirt. <laughs> I can make you a banner. Uh. Can you? Oh, really? Visit oh, Marines.com or call 1 800 Marines. One of those purple sashes you, like that, like the, the brown Ozzy guys do. Marines. WFLF Fine Hills, Orlando. Well, WMGF you know, we're, we're HD3. We're not Mount live, live but we have it. So. Oh, okay. Radio, WFLA yes. Orlando, an iHeart radio station. Stepping up their criticism. The I'm Joe Shearer. Yay, we made it. All right, guys. So, uh, the thyroids are fake news hoax. That is, uh, that's our little girl here. She's, she's beautiful, but, uh, anyway. but vociferous. She's trying real hard. She really is. There was a whole house full of very loud women earlier. Really? Really. It was like a big old magpie party. <laughs> You're okay. Don't worry about it. So anyway, you know that she's coming so drove, the, drove, drove the youngster crazy, huh? A little bit. Just a little. The thyroids are fake news hoax. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's Bork, Jonathan. I love it. He needs money for dippers. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how to spell diapers. There you go. <laughs> dippers. Oh, or maybe he does dip. No, it's diapers. Oh. D-I-P-A. Or, or T-P-E-O. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. All right, let's see. We're straight, we're straight there. Looks good here. Uh, are we still live on the internet? We are. Look at that. All right, everybody. Uh, oh, there it is. Magpie party. Yeah, we're only a little behind. I love it. Okay. You can see here. What do you need? Yeah. Okay, so. Anyway, so we're live at the moment um, on Facebook and Periscope as well as LinkedIn and also YouTube. We appreciate you hanging out with us. And uh, this is Melissa, in case you hadn't figured it out. But uh, I'm here. Hi. <laughs> you just can't see me. I don't know why. It's okay. But um, Doc is here and, he and his beautiful wife as well. And that's cool. That's a lot of cool, actually. Let's see if I can do it. I can't guarantee that it'll work this time. Well, you've got a great picture of Tess on the air right now. Who just sent me a video? Oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> just seeing if you're awake. Oh, that looks good. Now, new. Update contact with updated photo. Okay. All right, let's see. Yeah, no, it, it sent me. Well, it sort of. Now you're All right, so see, she does exist. She's here. She exists. Alright, so we are four minutes away. Look at that. So, okay. We don't need any of stinking news. Actually, we don't need no stinking bitches. You know, the other day I actually gave. You know how they love to give the uh, the, the COVID numbers, which. 
Yeah. It reminds me of George Carlin with the numbers for the temperature that old bit back in the yeah. day. You just throw a bunch of 76, <laughs> 75. <laughs> but he would never say what town. He just like, it was your temperature. <laughs> Pete Dippy weather, weatherman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. See, we do know. Anyway, so this is uh, on the website now. This is it. Oh, this is on good. Fa- that was the Facebook. That was the Facebook one. Yeah, ask her to put that up on the on the website too. That's good. That was a good. Okay, uh, you guys, cool. You can. I read some fake news. Hi, everybody. So, um, if you have any questions for Doc, we'll be doing that during the breaks, which seem to be a lot less than uh, longer than they should be, which is good. Look at that. You're gonna score oh, that one short. This one's good. Nice, right? There's a pharmacy specialist. That's your sponsor. That's good. That's good. Let's see. We got a hard break. 50. Looks good. Looks like you're getting a lot more show than you're supposed to. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I know, right? That's so cool. Yeah, it beats the heck out of last week. It sort of does. <laughs> we'll let him live, we'll, we'll let them live that right, down. They're not going to. You know, there's... <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. It was oh, pretty. Oh, we forgot to unplug the other guy. I'm sorry. The other guy didn't uh, disconnect the phone. Yeah, what is what happened? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that happen? Well, they, right. I mean, you know, two, it takes two people to keep a line open, <laughs> right? Am I missing something? Oh, I yeah. guess. I don't know. When you dial into the system, you do have to disconnect from wherever you're dialing in Sounds from. like a weakness. It, is, it might be. It is kind of weird. Let's see where we're at. Smoking. Traffic and weather. Free, become an X.org. X, a become new way an to think X about winning. Brought to you by X and the Ad Council. Obesity. Here's a good one. Troops and their families. The yeah, I became an X when my former wife divorced me. Snack way, before you shop. It's an experience that that soldier shower. You know, that's <laughs> really good advice. Yeah. You shower before you shop? No, no, snack. She, the shower oh. thing, too. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty crazy. That yeah. was so very weird. All right, we're in traffic and weather, and we will be live hot studio in a little bit here. Water drive. We're seeing some delays in that area. Also, the ladies are still building on I-4 westbound just past Maitland Boulevard. Who knows? We don't know. It's all a mystery to me. It's, it's great that we can actually see where we are in the in the in the, in the, in the show with this. This is like. This is like the way it's supposed to be, almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Look, and then look, there you are, live stages of life blocks. Uh, all right. Okay. Hey, everybody. You're getting a look behind the scenes of a professional. <laughs> let, 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 let's see. Can I, can I see if I can lock up Facebook again? Damn it, don't do it again. <laughs> you do not lock up Facebook. <laughs> Dude, you freaked me out just then when you did it. Damn it. Stand by. It's very we funny. Are. Admitted these murders. The crime is complex. That's my favorite commercial. <laughs> <laughs> People, I don't know, man. I heard to, uh, broadcasting a lot of podcasts. I really am. Yeah. So, wherever you get your podcasts. The following is a paid program. That's us. The views expressed are those of the host and callers and not those of News Radio WFLA Orlando, its management or advertisers. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, we're here. Yeah, there we are. Welcome to the show, everybody. Hi, how are you? Um, <laughs> it's Melissa Fox and our big buddy here, Dr. David Klein. How are you? I am feeling pretty darn good. It's 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 nice that things worked smoothly this time around. Yeah, it I was know. perfect. So thank you to the powers that be at WFLA. 931 Orlando because 941 too actually if you're uh-huh. north of Orlando yeah. which I am because we <laughs> finally got ourselves on time yeah stages of life radio hi how are you melissa fox helping out dr david klein the website you can check out is stages of life medical institute.com if you are interested in any of the products that might be referenced during this show stages of life vitamins.com and you can always follow us on facebook youtube and there might be something on twitter you just never know <laughs> it's all marvelous so what are we going to do gonna today do- Interesting. Okay, so today, first show, for was actually second show with FLA, but the first one that went on air, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to talk about thyroid disease. You know, and why do I want to talk about thyroid disease today? And it's because I'm really tired of talking about COVID. You know, I've been all over Fox News and, you know, all kinds of other uh, media 
okay, on this COVID thing, and it's just really kind of boring at this point. Nothing has really changed. It's a disease. It's real. It's not a, a conspiracy. You know, that they would be really good at conspiracy if this were a conspiracy, right? Okay, because if you have five friends, you think you can keep uh, a secret amongst five people? In the government, you really can't do that at all. In fact, if you have one person with a secret, you can't keep it secret. Ask Sally Yates. Okay, so what are we talking about here? So thyroid disease is something that's very, very important. It's very important to me, okay, personally, because I suffer from hypothyroidism. My daughter, my former wife, my mom, my sister, my wife. It's kind of interesting. You know, it sounds like, <clears throat> it sounds like a conspiracy. But the fact of the matter is, is that thyroid disease is something that affects about a third of the adult population in this country. I can't speak to what happens abroad because I've really only been there briefly. But in this country, about a third of the adults suffer from hypothyroidism. And so what, uh, what's this all about? How many of these people are actually diagnosed properly? And the answer is maybe one in five of those. So thyroid disease is one of the most common diseases that occurs as we get older thyroid disease becomes more common. Now you're going to start to say, well, what do I want to, what do I care about this? Well, I'll tell you what, if you suffer from any one of the following diseases or conditions, it could be caused from undetected to hype or, un, or poorly treated hypothyroidism. Number one would be depression. Number two would be heavy, irregular men menstruation. Number three, weight loss. Okay, if you're hyperthyroid, but weight gain if you're hypothyroid, and weight gain is two thirds of the population in this country. So if you're hyperthyroid, you get skinny. Hypothyroid, you get fat. Depression, elevated cholesterol, weight gain, sleep disorder, heavy irregular menstruation. It's kind of an interesting mishmash. So how do you how do you know that this is you? And, you know, and why should you care? And here's one of the things about diseases. You know, when you, when, you, when you watch TV, especially when you watch medical shows, everybody thinks they have that disease. You, know, you worry about, oh, my God, I think I have a tapeworm. Oh, my God, I think I have B12 deficiency. Oh, my God, I think I have X, Y, and Z. It doesn't really matter. You know, that's just the way people are. With thyroid disease, you actually got a pretty good chance of having it. And so the fastest way to figure out whether or not you are at risk or whether you might have it is to do something very, very basic, something very, very easy and very inexpensive. Go figure this one out. It's called taking your temperature. And I don't mean you know, sticking one of these little strips across your forehead, because that's, that's nonsense. That's helpful for an infant, okay, because if, if you don't want to wake them up, stick a little strip across their head, and you'll tell whether or not they, they, the liquid crystal says whether or not their forehead has a temperature. It doesn't tell you anything about their core temperature, but you know about their forehead. So what do you do? Okay, it used to be that we had these thermometers inside the thermometer was mercury, okay, and that mercury would expand and you'd be able to read a scale and it would tell you what the, what the temperature was. And the better, more accurate temperatures, especially in kids, were done rectally because you could get a core temperature. Well, the problem is, okay, is that it's just not the sort of thing you can really do at a stoplight. So people, you know, started doing oral temperatures. And as long as you don't use the rectal thermometer after somebody else uses it, it works just fine. And there's no structural difference between a rectal thermometer and an oral thermometer other than the shape of, the, of the, the bottom of it. Okay, it's a little blunter on the rectal. So what do you do? You want to take a real temperature, and that would mean putting the thermometer under your tongue, not waving it across the room like they do at these uh, movie theaters. You're going to come in, we're going to wave this, this temperature probe at, probe at you and pretend that we're actually doing something, okay? Because it doesn't pick up anything. You have to have somebody that is like sicker than stink, okay? to end up with a fever to be picked up on one of those devices. You know, so it's nonsense. So you go to the airport, they wave a temperature probe in front of you. That's not protecting you or anybody else. What you see there is taxpayer waste of money. What they need to be doing is selling thermometers or charging you a buck, stick it in your ear and actually get a real temperature. Then you might pick something up. But even at that, does it really do any good? And the answer is no. So what do you do? You take your own temperature. If your temperature is below 98 degrees before 9 o'clock in the morning, you're probably going to be okay. But if it doesn't break through the 98, 99 range by the end of the day, you may well have hypothyroidism. So what do you do? Okay, how do you make the diagnosis of thyroid disease after you have a suspicion that you might have it? So your cholesterol is high, okay, and you have to take medicine for it or they're trying to get you to. That's, that's an indicator that you may have an issue. Why? Because the candy maker called the, called, the, called the liver, okay, is actually what makes the, the, the cholesterol, right? Most of it is manufactured by you. 
when your temperature is too low, the, the, the liver doesn't work well, and then cholesterol goes up. It's usually a sign that the liver is not working properly. Cholesterol goes up. Triglycerides go up. Back in the day before we had TSH, which we'll discuss in a moment, the way you made the diagnosis of hypothyroidism was to feel people's neck, and you'd feel for an enlargement called a goiter. Is it there? Is it there? Let's poke around. Let's pretend. Okay, if you felt something there that wasn't normal, well, they may have hypothyroidism. And then you would do a cholesterol level. And if the cholesterol level were elevated, then you knew they had hypothyroidism. That was how it was done before we had TSH and the, and, and, and the thyroid uh, indices themselves. So what do we do? First thing, okay, if you want to look at yourself in the mirror or look at somebody else in the mirror, if you see what's called the suprasternal notch, there's like a, a depression, a, a dip, okay, just over the breastbone before it hits the neck. And you should be able to see a dip there. If you miss that, if it's not there any longer and it's filled in, that is a substernal uh, thyroid. Okay, it's a goiter or the beginnings of one. You have to look at this. And this is the first thing that changes before the neck starts to swell. When you have something that looks like the Michelin man, you know, there's a little, little blossoming vent. You know, any, anybody can pick up that diagnosis or anybody with eyes maybe. So what do we do? How do we make the diagnosis of thyroid disease? First thing that you have to do is go in there and talk to your doctor because you can't walk in necessarily to LabCorp Quest or wherever and say, I want somebody to test me for thyroid disease and I just don't feel like paying for it. No, you got to go to your doctor's office, okay? And then convince them, okay, to do the following. And this is where the real challenge is, okay? Because people, do, they don't like to be told what to do and doctors are no different. They don't like to be told what to do either, especially if they don't understand and they don't really necessarily want to go learn about it or read about it, especially from you, okay? So what you want is a TSH, something called a T3, a T4, a TPA, and an ATG, and you're going to go, what are these things? Again, thyroid-stimulating hormone, all the docs know how to do that. The T3, T4, most of them know how to do that. But then the TPA and the ATG are antibody tests for the thyroid. Now, we're hearing a lot about COVID with antibodies. You get infected, you develop the antibodies, hopefully, okay? And then that's a good thing. When you have antibodies to the thyroid, it's not a good thing. It's exactly the opposite. This means that you have an autoimmune issue. When you have autoimmune issues, then you end up with hypothyroidism. It makes it a whole lot harder to pick it up. Let's go ahead and go to a break right now, Dave. And you got uh, Dr. It. Dave Fed Klein is with us right now. Sorry, I'm trying not to cough. And you can check in at 407 422 1212 or text us at 23680. You're listening to Stages of Life Radio on News Radio WFLA Orlando. That was a good one. I dial back in. <laughs> That's just on our part. Is that Linda's music? Yeah. Something catchy. Cool. All right, we're in break for three and a half minutes. All right. Feel free to wander about the building. So if there's anybody out there on Facebook watching, we're actually taking live calls at 407-422-1212. So if you want to get on air, help us out, you know, ask questions. Dave has a question. He has a numbness in his left hand, starts at his shoulder, any clues he's going in Thursday to be seen. Sure enough. Okay, where in your hand is it bothering you? Okay, you have five fingers, a palm, and a top of a hand called yeah, the dorsum. It's a little bit to work with, isn't it? Yeah, it's not enough. Okay. Not enough information, Dave. Okay, it's not enough at all. <clears throat> oh, that was Dave Delgado? Yeah. Oh, he's going to be in my office. Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, Dave, I'll take care of you when you get there. <laughs> if he's helping, he is helping. Yeah, so. yeah, we'll take care of Dave. He's good. He's a good dude. He used to be my landlord at one time. Really? Yeah, when, the, when I was in a different building. Good guy. Hmm. I'm changing something here just so that you know. All right. Good guy. 
Look at that, Dave Delgado. That's what he said. Yeah. He's like, I'm seeing you on Thursday. I didn't quite catch that. I'm um. going in on Thursday. <laughs> there, I didn't read the rest of it. And he clues. Yeah, I'm clueless. I didn't see yeah, that I you're coming in on Thursday. I had nothing there either. We are also broadcasting live on the internet, connectionshow.com, livingsexyradio.com. And, um, yeah. We're but just what can cause, it. okay, just just, yeah. just 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 for the heck of what it. What can cause it? What can cause pain in the shoulder and in the hand like that? When you have pain in the shoulder and pain in the hand, look at the elbow. So very, very typically, golfer's elbow will do, will do it. That's medial epicondylitis. So right at the elbow, medial aspect, the, the flexors of the hand attach, or they actually originate there. But also at that spot is a nerve called the ulnar nerve. So when that area becomes inflamed, it'll cause the hand to get kind of weird, sometimes get a little numb or goofy or achy, and it will cause pain in the shoulder and neck. So that's one possibility. Another possibility is carpal tunnel syndrome can do it. It'll cause referred pain to the neck and shoulder. Biceps tendonitis can do it. Okay, bicipital tendonitis will cause pain behind the shoulder and it'll cause pain into the hand because of its, the irritation that sometimes happens with what's called the brachial uh, or the uh, uh, cubital nerve. It's kind of cool. So yeah, there are a bunch of things that can happen that'll do that. Payments, it's this weekend, Friday through Sunday, <clears throat> only at International Diamond Center. Connected now. So I have another minute there. Sorry. I'm just checking stuff here. It's kind of, kind of interesting getting used to these the, the different um, commercial cuts. They're, you know, they're actually interesting when you haven't heard them before. Not that interesting. Well, I guess we'll find out soon enough. Call us today to find out if you're All right, coming back in ah, 37, 27 seconds. So you can see all that. Nice shirt. I don't have one in my closet that I go ten, got 10 years ago. I love it. Oh, no, these are good. In fact, this may have been yours. You know, I think I, I, think I bought this at Goodwill. <laughs> all right, stand by. <laughs> All right. Start your day with Good Morning Orlando, Yay. 6 to 9 a.m. On News Radio WFLA Orlando. It's Barney. It's Barney. <laughs> All right, welcome back. This is Stages of Life Radio. <laughs> Apparently, we all should clear our throats. Yes. Dr. David Klein is with us, Stages of Life Medical Institute. It's Dr. Klein's show, where he's going to talk about all kinds of stuff, but today we've got a lot on the table. Thyroids. You want to check in? 407-422-1212. Again, 407-422-1212. Or you can text in a question if you like at 23680. We also are live on Facebook and uh, Periscope and YouTube, so you can always go back and listen to this later or catch us now at Stages of Life Medical Institute on those various platforms. Dr. Klein, we've been talking about the thyroid Lots of interesting things about the thyroid today, as well as the quarantine 25. Yeah, my cor- my 25. You know, COVID-19 turned to COVID-25 is on my butt. So what am I going to do about it? Probably less pizza. <laughs> Certainly less pizza. So in any event, so thyroid. Okay, or more thyroid, actually. You know, it could be my thyroid acting up. I haven't, you know, I went in to have my blood checked uh, two weeks ago. I'm due to get my, my review with my PA, which is actually kind of interesting. So, you know, you go in there to get uh, evaluated by your own employee. And so it's like, well, well hey, boss, <laughs> you know, what, what do you think of this? So in any event, so it gets, it gets interesting, but it keeps it, uh, keeps it lively. So I haven't even looked at my own lab work, lab work, except for the COVID testing, which was negative. So what do we do with thyroid and why do you care? Okay, because it's extraordinarily common. It's a common cause of um, basically preventable obesity, preventable uh, cholesterol issues, Preventable cardiac issues, preventable depression. You know, it's just it's so simple to treat, so inexpensive and so easy once you get the diagnosis. Hmm. So the trick is finding somebody that really understands and cares about what's going on. And that's not so easy. You know, you go in and it's like, oh, you know, you're just another whiny, whiny kind of person that thinks that they have what's going on because you read WebMD. So, you know, and that's a that's an unfortunate thing. You know, but it's 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 common out there. You know, people do not listen. They don't. They just don't care anymore. And that's true of doctors, nurses. It's true of just about everybody. And it's a shame. 
So what do you do and how do you, um, how do you understand how thyroid works? So what the thyroid gland does is it sets and maintains the basal metabolic rate. So what this means to you is it means that it sets your temperature. Your temperature goes up as the day goes on and your temperature drops. So if somebody asked you, what's a normal human being's temperature and you come up with the word 98.6, the answer is wrong because it's only 98.6 briefly during the day. It's hat spends much of the time below, below that at 97.6 and it'll go all the way up to 99.6. So it will go up and it will go down. So as the day goes on, your temperature goes up and then it drops in the evening hours as you're trying to sleep. So, you know, what does this mean to you? What it means is, is that if your thyroid is dysfunctional, something is going to not work. Something is not going to happen the way it's supposed to. So what else can influence thyroid? You know, does the thyroid break itself, the gland itself in your neck? Does it break? Does it become uh, dormant? What happens to it? And so, the pituitary gland, uh, by way of the hypothalamus, this is part of the brain, will stimulate the thyroid to, to create more or create less thyroid as the day goes on to release it. Okay, so this is the control mechanism. It comes from your brain. It's controlled. Brain itself is controlled by eyes, so it can see whether it's light outside or dark outside. There are a whole bunch of feedback uh, mechanisms that are very interesting, but one of the most interesting is the estradiol uh, effect. So if your estradiol is too little, thyroid doesn't work at all okay which is kind of cool why because women drop their estradiol levels as they get older and it's not just just your aunt the elderly aunt the dried up one no 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 it's all of them every one of them is going to end up with estrogen issues as they age and then men okay wouldn't you know it their estrogen levels climb with age so it's a little bit easier to pick up thyroid disease in men for this reason, because they're not estrogen deficient. In fact, they're estrogen dominant. They end up with more estrogen than they need, and they end up watching Oprah and daytime drama. It's not a good thing. So what does the thyroid do? Metabolic rate. What else does it do? Okay, now, what, what's a hormone? Let's start with that. So a hormone is a chemical. It's a messenger that creates a situation that makes a gene fire, turn on or turn off a gene that causes a protein to be manufactured or not be manufactured. And you're going to go, well, why do I care about this? You know, you know, I made it through high school and college and, and I've passed the test. Why do I care? And the answer is this, because genes fire based upon hormonal influence, but hormones don't operate in singularity. That means they don't operate by themselves. They operate in groups. If it weren't that case, then when a woman's uh, progesterone goes up, her breast would enlarge, but so would her eyeballs. The fact of the matter is, okay, that these hormones act as very much like numbers on a combination lock. So if the numbers are right, the lock opens. But if one of those numbers is wrong, the lock stays shut. So most of your genes stay shut. 15,000 genes, only 1,500 are operating in any particular cell. That's because of this particular phenomenon. So if you can imagine a bank vault with 10 numbers in it, okay, if one of those numbers isn't right, you can't rob the bank. Like, go figure, unless you're you know, wrapped up in, in, in a, a dark mask in Portland, then you just pull, you know, just walk in. So what do we do? Okay, first thing we need to do is to figure out the diagnosis. Second thing is, is treat it. Now, how do you treat thyroid disease? You treat thyroid disease by replacing it. Now, one of the things that is generally done is people are told, well, you know, you take T4 and you take it once a day and that's sufficient. Well, your thyroid gland actually kicks up secretion as the day goes on. It drops off as the day eases out. So does it make any sense necessarily to take these pills once a day? Because that was what you were taught in 1950 when they brought out this. They brought this stuff out, 1950. The answer is no. They brought out the <clears throat> combination T3, T4 in actually 1903. It's been around a lot longer than the, than the T4 preps that most people use. So that was around 50 years before this other stuff came out. So what do you do? Okay, you want the body to convert T4 to T3, and it'll do it on its own, unless you're one person in six where it doesn't, so you need a little kick in the butt. So the way I, t I like to treat thyroid disease is as this. You go ahead and you take your medication as prescribed but i prefer to divide the dosage unless somebody is extraordinarily uh, lucky take it once a day it works out fine for them but actually about half the people that i treat need to divide the dose and take one in the morning and one after lunch that way it loads the medication in during that period of time where you actually have to see the thyroid so what do i use why do i prefer to do it i use something called nature throid 
I also use Armor Thyroid, WP Thyroid, and to some extent I'll use NP Thyroid. And these are all natural thyroid hormones. T3 and T4 together. Hey guys, if you're just joining us, we're listening to Stages of Life Radio with Dr. David Klein from Stages of Life Medical Institute. And he is, you know, we're getting a lot of compliments on your shirt. People that are watching, and that's a very nice thing. It's a good shirt. It is a good shirt. Yeah, I like it. It's a Tommy Bahama. Uh, oh, there you go. Um, we had a couple of questions about the COVID uh, hotline that you have yes. set up and exactly what that entails. So if you wouldn't mind diverting from the thyroid for just a second to help us out with the pertinent COVID hotline information and what that all uh, is. Okay, now, you know, I, was an, I was an analytical chemist before I was a doctor, okay? So just, just so we'll understand where I come from on this. So about three years ago, I got a little bored and decided that I was gonna get into molecular genetics, okay? So in order to do that, in order to test for molecular genetic uh, diseases in, in terms of laboratory, which I, you know, I, I'm a part owner in Jacksonville, I had to become a molecular geneticist. So I read a book, took a test, the federal government gave me the certificate that said I could do it. So we started getting into molecular genetic identification of diseases. Then COVID hit, okay? So we're up there taking care of urinary tract infections, bronchitis, diarrhea, and then all of a sudden people are dying of COVID. So we pivoted okay, the business to start doing COVID testing. So we've been doing this type of testing for over three years. Now, why do I mention this? The answer is because we are not new to this. We have been doing it longer than about anybody else around in this part of the country. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what do we do? So we're able to test for COVID in singularity, which means we can bring somebody in and do a nasal swab, which is really not a big deal. And we can talk about that later. And within 36 to 48 hours, we're able to deliver the result that takes many of these laboratories between five and 15 days to, to get back to you. And in some cases, they never send it to you. So it's kind of interesting. So why do we do this? The answer is because it's neat. Okay, it's, it's, it's a challenge. And I like personally to be the best that there is. I have this need okay <laughs> to, to, to do this i've heard that yeah and so what do we do okay the the, the company is, is called florida laboratory analysis and so i'm the medical director and part owner so but the number is 407-636-3945 call that number let them know what you need we'll take care of you and so at the, again, it's 407-636-3945. We can do as many as just one person, two persons, a family, or we can do a nursing home with two or 300 or an employer with 1,000. I'll be flying up to Minnesota towards the middle of this month where we've got a 30,000 member employer that wants us to work for them. And so we can knock it out. It's not a big problem. You don't have to go to break yet. We have a couple of questions here. Sure, some folks, uh, <clears throat> let's see. I'll see what oh, um, didn't get the foods to eat. To help the thyroid on the last show, what uh, foods? What what you really want to look at, okay, Iggy, you're a good man, okay. So what you want to look at, okay, is avoiding certain things. Avoid soy. That's soy, soy lecithin, very very important. Second thing is avoiding peanuts, peanut butter, anything that has peanut in it. And the third thing are garbanzo beans, hummus because it contains daidzine and genistein. Those foods contain two isoflavones that trash the thyroid. And that's a big problem. Why? Because there are people out there that'll eat bags of peanuts and get fat. There are people out there that'll suck down soy and get fat. So what is it about soy? That's how we fatten cattle. So if you have, a, if you have a, a cattle in a feedlot, you give them soy meal and you give them um, corn meal and they fatten 30% in six weeks. That's not what you wanna do. So, Iggy, yeah, I hope that helped you. And then what you can take to support the thyroid, again, is zinc and selenium. Okay, those two minerals are very, very important for thyroid function. So what I use people, what I use personally is called magic minerals because it's got the zinc and selenium in the right ratios, as well as vanadium, chromium, boron, uh, magnesium, manganese, calcium. And so it's a pretty good prep and it's reasonable. So that's what I do. That's how I would suggest it. There are other things you want to do for thyroid, and we can get into that when we come back. There are nutraceuticals that you want to do that are very, very useful for thyroid disease. But if you pick your medicines, you pick your nutraceuticals, you pick your, your, your poison, as it were, you can get more than one thing done with it. And that's smart. You know, it's smart. smart. If you had to pick one tool, what would it be? It's something that could do multiple jobs. 
you know, or protect yourself. You know, so a screwdriver is a good choice and a hammer is a good choice. And then everything else in between is a specialty tool. If you'd like to text in your questions or anything, uh, comments, again, about Dr. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Good, Klein's though, it? shirt, it is good. No, it's a great shirt. 23680 or 407-422-1212. Go usually ahead, I, tell usually me more. I, usually I wear the Stages of Life shirt. I know. But I wore this today because it was my, my, my mother-in-law's birthday. Ah. Uh. So I didn't want to wear a corporate shirt to her birthday party. No, it's fine. That's fine. You're listening to Stages of Life Radio on News Radio WFLA Orlando. And if you are not a patient of Dr. Klein's yet, you should be one. Uh, I'm serious. <laughs> You're for, missing out. You really are missing out. The guy loves a challenge, and he's not one of them that just treats symptoms, which makes me happy because... Um, yeah, but it doesn't make the drug pharma people happy. But it <laughs> well, the joke is, I have a bunch of drug salesmen that are patients of mine. Yes, exactly. Yeah, they I come in to sell me stuff, and they end up as patients. <laughs> end up with the nutraceuticals. Yeah. But um, Stages of Life Medical Institute is right off of I four and four thirty four in Longwood, Florida. Very easy to get to. People make the hop over from the villages all the time. And uh, you you do the telehealth visits, but you don't necessarily we recommend do them. I don't like them. I think it I think it is a cheapening of medicine. Mm. You pay the same. Oh well, you don't have to pay a copay. Guess what? Okay, you're getting you're getting a cut down, cheapened version of medical care. And I'll tell you what, I've been doing this for forty two years. If I can't look at you, I mean, look at you in the eye, look you up and down. I can't see what's going on with you. And on a television screen, especially a low resolution one. You really can't see what's going on. I certainly can't examine you. I can't watch you walk. I can't watch your posture. So mm-hmm. people are doing this telemedicine thing, and they're they're getting away with it. But frankly, it's it's poor medicine, in my opinion. And and you know, is it fast? The answer is, oh, you betcha. You can get people in and out. You know, make a buck. Oh, you but I'll betcha. I'll tell you what. I don't think it's a good, you betcha. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but I don't think it's a good thing. Do we do it? Yeah. Now, there are times when it makes sense. So if somebody comes in for the first visit, would I, would I ever do a first visit by telehealth? Only if they're in Alaska and I've done it. Oh, yeah. Okay, because there's no other choice. Or if I've got somebody in Europe, I have no other choice. But I will do it if I, ha- if I have a situation where I've already figured out what's going on, and then I need to do a blood work review. But otherwise, I think it's a really bad they're idea. They're calling you Dr. Scary Smart. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I think that's your friend, well, Dave. better than H. Lecter. <laughs> uh, Carl is also, no, this is uh, our people who are participating with the Facebook Live oh, feed, okay. which we are, so they can see the doctor as well. Uh, Carl checked in. He said, I hope you're training someone to help people after you retire. Who says I'm going to retire? You know, <laughs> why would I do that? He said, I mean, you're one of the, he goes on to say, you're one of the most reliable people uh, every time uh, who I've ever come into contact with in my life. Well, thank you. Yeah, That's I've, pretty high. Uh, I yeah. haven't missed a day with this COVID thing. It's just been, you know, it, it, this. You, why in the world, okay, would you close a medical practice, okay, for an epidemic? It, like, makes no sense. Makes no sense. It sense. makes no sense. What a bunch of sissies. Okay, well, I'm not going to go in because I might catch it. You know, that's like the, that's, you know, the, the town's on fire, but the firemen are going home because they don't want to get hot. Yeah. You know, I mean, give me, really a, a fan. give me a break. Okay, well, we have a riot going on out there, and the cops are, are, are leaving because they don't want to get th- stones thrown at them. No. When I was in the military, you did not run from the shooting. You run towards it, right? Yeah. That's you, were in the, you, you wore the uniform. That is how it works. Yes, that's I how did. it works. Yeah, I ran you know, towards it. You ran towards it. Okay, that's the way that it goes. You know, I've, been, I've gotten to war twice. You don't <laughs> run from it. <laughs> you have a question here on Facebook. How? Oh, hi, Doc. How can you recommend supplements, if any, to help osteoarthritis in my knees? Both knees have bone on bone on each side of the knee, which sounds very painful. Yeah, it can be, but you need to, to, to sort this one out. Okay, the pain fibers are actually in a membrane that surrounds the bone called the periosteum. And when it wears away bone on bone, that membrane is gone, which means so are the pain fibers. So if something is hurting, it's not the bone on bone. What I do for folks that have severe osteoarthritis is several things. One, I start them on oral MSM. MSM stands for methyl sulfonylmethane. It's a big, ugly tablet. This thing's about the size of your little digit, okay? Uh And you can take it. I I take two of them a day. Your body sucks it up very, very easily, and it's a non non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. What that means is that it doesn't have any net effect on the kidney that's, that's problematic. It's an antioxidant and it's cheap, but it's a great antiarthritic. The second thing you take is a product that's called Lubricin. Lubricin is hyaluronic acid. It's a liquid. Now, why do I use this stuff? Because it's less expensive than the tablets. 
So you do about one tablespoon of hyaluronic acid once a day. It does a couple things. Now, this is where it gets smart. If you get more than one bang for your buck, then you're actually doing something cool. So what does MSM do? Oral MSM is a vasodilator. It makes your nails and, and skin grow faster and better. Oh. Oh, very, very interesting, okay? Second thing that it does is it facilitates absorption of other medications through your GI tract, as well as being uh, an antioxidant and the antiarthritic. So the stuff is brilliant. But what does Lubricin do? Hyaluronic acid. Okay, it is what it, the body uses it to create the liquid that's on the inside of the joints, the lubricating fluid. Okay, it's called the tenosynovium or the synovial fluid. But what else does it do? Your skin sucks it up. It loves it. Okay, yeah. and it makes your skin more pretty, like mine. Okay, uh -huh. it makes your, your hands and your feet look a whole lot better, like I guess like mine, maybe not. Uh -huh. Okay, you're, you're kind of gnarly. In my studio. You know, there you go. So what does Lubricin do for you? Okay, it makes your knees feel better, but the least. Uh, it, but it does a whole bunch of good things for the rest of your body. It'll help you with your eyes and helps you with your ears, which are also very dependent on, on hyaluronic acid for the liquid that's inside. What else do you do? I use a product called Kinky's Lotion, which is MSM. It's a suspended solution. For your knees, what you do is you put it behind the knees. So you sit down, get your, your legs into a 90 degree position, and you uh, put a squirt of this on your hands and put it into the small portion behind the knee. It goes in in about 15, 20 seconds, and your knees will start to feel better. It is wickedly cool. If you want to try it, you can come in the, in the store, the Stages of Life store. We have some samplers there. You can try it out and see if it works for you. So what I tell people is you sit down, slap it on. If it makes you feel better, you know it's the right thing. If it isn't, don't waste your money. And you'll know within you'll know within 15 to 30 seconds. It is fast. That's good stuff. That's how you do it. That's where I would start with the arthritis until I could see some lab work on you. Now, these things can all be found on um, Stages of your, Life. Okay. Yeah, Stages, Stages of Life, life Vitamins.com. Vitamins. Mm -hmm. So the Kinky's Lotion, I invented that for my daughter's horse Okay, mm -hmm. when she was about 12 years old, 10, 12 years old. So she had a horse, and she was one of these little kids with the hats and the boots. And, you know, the, you, you send them to these shows, and for, you know, all this money you spend on these, these horse things, they give you a $3 ribbon if the kid does uh, as well as six other kids in there. You know? oh. I mean, so it, but the, the kids love this stuff great very expensive thing so you know her horse would come up lame which means you have to call who the horse doc now if you think that human docs are expensive you call the vet sometime so she'd you know the vet would come out and the horse has four extremities okay two knees two hocks okay you know this is the way these things work and when they inject them it's 460 to 500 bucks each that's too big right that's that that is that is two thousand bucks so I came up with this idea to have this stuff so you could apply it to the horses, hocks, knees, fetlocks, withers, and whatnot, and it worked. So we produced a product called Hockeys, which was used on, and still is used on uh, racetracks. It's kind of neat, because it doesn't test. Oh. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Okay, so then that the horse handler started stealing it. And so then, I don't know, you know, I was trying to figure this out until I realized that they were treating their, their hands, their, their knees, their elbows. And I thought, well, maybe I'll start trying it on my patients. And it's been that way ever since. So for about the past 15 years, we've been treating patients. There you go. You're listening to Stages of Life with Dr. David Klein. We do this Sundays at 4 o'clock, north of Orlando on 94.1, south of Orlando on 93.1, all over the state of Florida, AM 540. And of course, you can catch us all over the world on the iHeart Radio app. We will be right back. We have to take a quick time out. Support our sponsors, please, including pharmacy specialists. Oh, I love those guys. I've known them for 30 years. Good people. They do all of my HRT work. And we are on a commercial break. Yay! You learn anything from the doc? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what's it, Dr. Smarty? What did you say? Super smart? I don't know. I don't know. Scary. Scary smart. Scary smart. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Mm. All right. So uh, what do we got up there? Now I'm trying to get this thing. Uh, so Phil, let's see, Phil Kowski, he, he's, he advertised on us? Mm hmm Good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, let's see if we can get back in there. Great. All right, we got to... Uh, can't get back in. That's right. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wrong button. No, not me. That's the boss. Mm. <laughs> What's he going to call him? <laughs> Let me in. Let me in. This is, this is the reality of, of, of this telemedicine. Okay, now, telemedicine's easy relative to teleradio. 
<laughs> oh, it's just getting so much better, though. You know, it's like um, everybody wants. To, they think that the 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 sign. That it's all this. This is it. It's, this is the internet. This is the way it should be. Yeah, and you're like, well, Are you, you know, kidding? some things you really have to do in person. It's nice to be able to look at people, especially the producers. Okay, because they're sitting there. They've got their clock. You can't see it, although I can see your clock, which is kind of nice. But you don't know when you're supposed to start and stop. You know, so, and especially when you're going uh, on something that's not scripted. Okay, and I've been doing this sort of thing for over 20 years, well over 20 years, and I've never had a script. Yeah. Now, I do I have do cue cards because I can't remember the numbers. Okay, <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember my birth date. Okay, just to the truth be known, I never could. So we have all the, 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 the numbers, you know, 94, 1, 93, 1, AM, 540, yada, yada. I can't remember any of that stuff because it's not important to me. So I write it down. The medical stuff, no, nah, that's in my head. Okay, so people say, well, you must have a computer in front of you so you can look this stuff up. And the answer is no, you're confusing me with somebody else. I don't know how to use a computer. No. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> That's pretty good. <clears throat> you're fibbing. <laughs> no, I, do not e- I do not use a computer. Okay. So, right. But I just assume not be distracted by it when I'm in the air. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. It really does. If I don't know it by now, I'm not going to know it. So, you know, why, you know, why sit back and... You know, and then try to pick stuff up. Oh gosh, makes no sense. You know, now if it were if it were silly stuff, you know, like you know, you know, automobile error codes, you know, who the hell remembers all that stuff? I mean, that's, I can't think of anything less meaningful in one's life. Although, okay, although you know, we had an issue at the Klein household this past okay. week. Okay, with a with a dryer. Washer. Okay, washer dryer. Okay, the well, actually the the dryer did fine, but it's the washer that was the problem. Oh, so it stopped working. Okay, now that's a problem. Okay, when you when you're when you're married to an interior designer, you can't have one thing go bad. It means you have to replace all of it because it all has to match. Okay, you got to understand. All right, so this is an expensive deal. Yeah. So she you know she goes ahead and and the error code pops up. Okay, so and 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 Tess, my wife. All right. That's her. Nothing is all that <laughs> precise. You get. She got 20 the code seconds. wrong. <gasps> it almost cost us two G's. Sound any better? <laughs> Almost got you, duty. Two grand. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we get twenty seconds. That's our. You know, Linda comes up with some good bump music. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. That's Nunez Productions. It is. Yeah, you can check that out. Yeah, she does. She does. She does okay. Dr. Scary Smart likes it. I like it a lot, actually. That would have been a good... Welcome back to Stages of Life Radio every Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock here on News Radio WFLA Orlando. Yes, you might recognize the voice. It's Melissa Fox from Good Morning Orlando. And, of course, Dr. David Klein, because it's his show. I'm just here to help him out. Yeah, when Howard Stern's not around. It oh, always stop. works. <laughs> you can call in if you like, 407-422-1212. Again, 407 407- Four two two twelve twelve, or you can text a question in if you like two three six eight zero. Also, we are broadcasting on all kinds of different platforms, social media wise. So, follow us on Facebook at Stages of Life Medical <laughs> Institute. Now, we were talking with the doc about the thyroid. That's been the main theme of the show today. We paused for a minute to talk about the uh, rapid testing that you do have available for COVID. A couple of folks were wondering uh, why, where they could find that in the Central Florida area. The deets are that basically uh, you can do the test here, but it's still got to be taken up to Jacksonville yes. to take care of it. Or if you felt like doing a little road trip, woo woo. Yeah, you, you could. Do that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it all depends on your level of comfort and, and, and how fast you need to have things done. So the laboratory, the commercial lab, is, is on the second floor of the VA uh, building in Jacksonville. So oh. it's, a, it's a fairly big facility that we've got. So what do we do? You know, we have 150 phlebotomists and others, nurses and whatnot across the state that actually do this, the blood draws, they do the samplings, the nasal swabs and whatnot, those things that have to be done. And so then the samples are handed off. It's like one big uh, relay race across the state until the stuff ends up in Jacksonville, usually by five or six o'clock in the evening. Okay. The medication, the uh, blood work is then run. The COVID stuff, uh, they're prepped because they have to be prepped before they're put into the PCR machine. And then it's all run by three o'clock in the morning. So we start at six in the morning and we finish at four in the morning. Wow. 
Wow. So that is a long day. That's a big day. So yeah. how is it? How is it? You guys can do it in how 24. How is it possible? Because we work hard. Okay. And you've got the machine too. We work. Yeah, we got the machine. We have the we have the, the probably the fastest PCR machine in the country, and so it will do between 380 and 1800 studies per hour, depending upon how they're prepped. So if you do the pooling studies, you know you can you can pool them depending upon the the incidence of and prevalence of COVID within your community. So you may pull six to ten, in which case we can do you know three thousand an hour. Or if you're in, in Orlando, okay, where you, your incidence may be thirty percent, twenty mm-hmm. to thirty percent, you can't pull them at all. So then we're down to three hundred and eighty per hour. So that's still a lot per day. It's a lot of testing. That's a heck of a lot of testing. It's a heck of a lot of but testing. But you've got the machines that pull it off. We do. So. It. Yeah. We well, and, and we we had them. That's the beauty in this. You couldn't get these machines after COVID hit. Mm-hmm. We bought ours six months before the disaster. <laughs> so we, it was just a simple matter of waiting until we could get our reagents. So the COVID hotline and the numbers sprawled across the screen if you're watching us on YouTube or Periscope or Facebook. But for you who are listening possibly on the radio today, 407-636-3945. Again, 407-636-3945. Or you can go to FloridaLaboratoryAnalysis.com. Right? Yeah, you can, you can check us out there. You know, we do employer testing. So this is large groups of people. We'll do entire nursing homes. You call us tomorrow, we can schedule you Tuesday. So 407-255-4371. We have a lot of people to to, uh, deploy. Mm -hmm. So if you have somebody in Titusville, we can have them out there. If you've got somebody in uh, Tallahassee, we've got people out there. So what does it mean? It means we're actually able to go out and take care of you. Now, are we going to travel halfway across the country to do one person? Uh, probably not. I don't, no. th- I don't think you can afford that. Well, you know. Well, there are people who think, well, they pay. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, actually, you know, we, we had we had some folks in Honolulu. We had some folks in Anchorage okay. where they couldn't get a boat, a ship going until we were able to get them Could traded. Take a junket. We had, yeah, we had, a, we had an ammunition ship in Jacksonville Harbor that had to leave. And so we had to, to get in there to, to test the captain mm-hmm. so that they could get that, that boat out of harbor. If wow. you don't think that's a big issue, it's a huge issue. Get a look at Beirut right now. Oh, gosh. Okay, there was an explosion there that took out half the city from what was basically an ammunition ship. Yeah, okay? yeah, fireworks and whatnot. Yeah, it was it was ammonium nitrate. You know, twenty seven hundred tons of ammonium nitrate, and you ended up with fifteen billion dollars worth of damage. So they did not want this to happen to Jacksonville, so they asked us to go do it, <laughs> and we did it. Wow. Yeah, the Navy asked us. So, very impressive. Very so, cool. Yeah. So, so you're getting the top-notch stuff here with Dr. David Klein. Five board certifications, pain management. The idea, though, of pain management is you don't want them on the opioids. No. You want them to get off of that crap and get their lives back. The trick is is that when people are in pain, okay, this is the, you know what got me interested in the first place, was, you know, is it chronic pain? The answer is no. You have somebody that has acute pain that's chronic in nature. Mm-hmm. So if you have migraine. Okay, every time you have a migraine, that's not a chronic pain issue. It comes and goes. It's, it's, it's like labor pains. I, I used to be a, 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 an obstetrical anesthesiologist. That's not a chronic pain situation. That's repetitive trauma. Oh. So if you've got somebody that's got, oh, I don't know, let's say chronic low back pain due to, to um, back surgery, this is kind of an interesting problem. What is continuing to hurt? Why is it continuing to hurt? So you give them opiates, you give them anti-inflammatories, you give them anti-convulsants, and they don't get better. It controls it a little bit. Mm-hmm. You have to figure out why they're still hurting. And frequently it's something as, as easy as osteoporosis. You think, about well, why would osteoporosis hurt? Okay, well, if, you, if you've had your back or neck operated on and you have screws and bolts and plates in there, mm-hmm. every time you move it hurts. Why? Because those screws loosen up a little bit against the bone. So if your bone is osteopenic, that means that it's not dense enough, Mm -hmm. those screws move. Ooh, that's got to be painful. And it hurts. So what you do is you harden the bone. And wouldn't you know it? It makes a huge difference. What does it take to do that? Frequently, it takes balancing thyroid, balancing gonadotropins, balancing cortisol. So let's say that you're out there right now and you're taking pain medications. God bless you. Okay. One of the things that I like to check is cortisol levels. Why? Because pain medications chase cortisol levels into the trash. All right? And so when that happens, that's the body's main natural anti-inflammatory. So if you don't know that you've made somebody Addisonian with your your, uh, hydrocodone or oxycodone or Dilaudid, they continue to get worse. 
So, you know, it's, I got interested in this 40, you know, about 40 years ago. So what happens when somebody has RSD? Okay, causalgia, they used to call it, pseudex atrophy, something they call it complex regional pain syndrome now. It's all the same disease. It hasn't changed since it was first seen in the 1860s. What I found there got me really interested in thyroid disease is that every one of the patients with, with CRSP, uh, the, the, the uh, um, complex regional pain syndrome, every one of them had autoimmune thyroid disease. And I started treating these folks. Wow. And then I started getting patients referred from the NIH because this was, this was interesting enough to them just of to have course. them start sending me right. patients. It's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, don't get me started on fibromyalgia. Uh, I hate when people throw that up at me it's or not, yeah. chronic, uh, what is the other chronic one? Chronic fatigue syndrome. Yeah. No, these are, these are not diseases with no known cause. That is nonsense. The number one cause of, of fibromyalgia, wouldn't you know it, is hypothyroidism. What? Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> hypothyroidism causes fibromyalgia. So if you don't treat it, what else will cause fibromyalgia? Hyperparathyroidism. Okay, so you'll see this. This is a cousin to thyroid disease. So mm -hmm. I check everybody that comes through the door for parathyroid disease. It's supposed to be a rare illness. Well, if we're so darn rare, why do we pick up five or six a month? Wow. Because we look. You know, go figure. So, you know, parathyroid disease is not as uncommon as they say. So the whole trick to this business is to keep your eyes open, your ears open, and to keep your mind open. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. because just because you don't know what's causing something...